So you know that Kratos is strong, but did you know that his speed goes beyond the concept of time? And this is also not even the craziest feat that Kratos has. Let's get into it. Kratos, the god of war, the one that took down the entire Greek pantheon and the Norse gods. To go over how powerful Kratos is, we are going to be going over end of god of war Ragnarok Kratos. This will include the equipment that Kratos is wielding by the end of the game. For those that aren't aware, some quick background on Kratos is that Kratos is the son of Zeus, who was the king of the gods, and Kratos was born in Sparta, then would eventually become a general of the Spartan army. If you know anything about Spartans, they are raised from birth to become the best warriors, and Kratos stands out higher than the others. Kratos would eventually reach out to the gods for help in a war. Then the god of war Ares would help him in return for his servitude. Then Ares wanted to perfect his new warrior, and would trick him into killing his wife and daughter. For Ares, this seemed like a good idea, and that Kratos would have no weakness, but obviously this would be a driver for Kratos. Kratos would be plagued with these memories and set out to kill the god of war and eventually the rest of the Greek gods. And if you're interested, I could do a god of war story explained series, let me know in the comments. Now that we have the background, let's get into Kratos' equipment that he wields at the end of Ragnarok. The Blades of Chaos, forged in the deepest parts of the underworld. The fire is a primordial fire created using the power of the primordial being known as Chaos. The blades also grow stronger in power as stated in the first God of War book. These blades also were able to create fire in Hell, which is a realm in which it is so cold that fire cannot exist. The Leviathan. This axe was created by the dwarf blacksmiths Sindri and Brock, who originally provided it to Freya, Kratos' late wife, to which Kratos would eventually wield after her death. This axe is able to clash with Mjolnir, which was used to fight the World Serpent when Thor fought it, which also sent the same World Serpent back in time with how powerful of a blow that Thor was able to provide to the World Serpent. Also, when Kratos fights Thor for the first time, the Leviathan and Mjolnir clash, making a frozen lightning strike in the middle, when, which you can see throughout the rest of the game. Drop near spear. This was crafted by the Lady of the Forge and harbors the power of duplication and wins concussive force and was blessed by Brock, one of those legendary dwarven blacksmiths I mentioned earlier. Now let's get into the abilities that Kratos has that are outside of his equipment. Regeneration. Kratos has been able to regenerate damage that he has received throughout the games when he concentrates or uses the Blades of Chaos to gather his strength back. Kratos' Rage. Throughout the games, it's called something different, but overall, it's when Kratos lets out a rage and starts to pummel any enemy he comes across, and he gets a surge of power from it. Realm Shift. These are more seen in video game mechanics, but this is also shown with Heimdall, which we will be getting into when we talk about their fight specifically. Kratos has escaped the concept of death several times throughout the series. This includes the Underworld with Hades, reaching death's domain with Thanatos, and then heading to hell when facing off against the Norse gods. Finally, let's go over the most powerful enemies that Kratos has defeated, along with the feats that they have performed and mentioned. Kronos, the leader of the Titans, along with the father to Zeus. Kronos worked with his fellow Titans to defeat the primordial beings that quite literally created the God of War universe, at least for the Greek portion. I do want to note that when Kronos was born, it was described that time itself was created as well. This was confirmed by Ariel Lawrence, one of the writers of the God of War Ascension game, where we first get to hear about the primordials with their war. This is also further confirmed when Kronos provides his rage to Kratos in God of War 2. And in the novel, we hear Kratos realizing that Kronos' power isn't only a power that makes him more powerful. It is compatible with the Amulet of Fates, which allowed Kratos to slow down time to perform some puzzles. Then finally, with the Steeds of Time as a gift for the Sisters of Fate, Kronos had hoped that this would allow him to prevent his fate with Zeus from happening, but this wasn't the case. With time not existing until Kronos was born, it would mean that every single primordial titan and god that was involved with fighting either of these beings would be immeasurable speed, as time did not exist before Kronos, where normally to measure someone's speed, you would take the distance they traveled and divide it by the amount of time it took for them to travel there. In the case where these beings are moving distances without time existing, this is what makes their speed immeasurable, as they are not frozen in place without time existing. Kronos would lose his power, be defeated by his son Zeus, and later killed by Kratos himself. 
Last note on the claim is that obviously this is crazy to think about and we need to be accepting of the fact that the writers are also trying to tell a story. So there are times where these feats aren't going to line up with the narrative that is being pushed within the games in the books. One of the infamous notes is Kratos struggling to open any chest when he does things that are infinitely more impressive than a certain chest, right? So you just have to understand that. To not repeat myself, I would like to note that the immeasurable speed would be relevant to the individuals that are primordial beings like Thanatos, who we are going to go over next. Also titans that killed primordials like Kronos. And finally, this would follow any gods that defeated titans that had defeated any primordials like Zeus, which Kratos has done all three. Continuing on to Thanatos, the primordial god of death, ruler of death's domain. In God of War Ghosts of Sparta, which is right before God of War 2, we meet Thanatos, who is a primordial being. And having survived the war of the primordials would be relative to the rest of them and their power. Along with this, Thanatos is the one that imprisoned Deimos, Kratos' brother. And he would eventually fight both Kratos and Deimos, and while having this 2v1, would resist both of them. Eventually, Thanatos would be able to kill Deimos which sends Kratos into a rage, and eventually he gets bested by the Ghost of Sparta. Poseidon, noted several times as the second most powerful Greek god. Poseidon is so powerful that him simply clenching his fist and letting out a roar was able to shake the earth, and he had a nickname of Earthshaker because of this particular feat. This is also noted in the God of War 1 book version of the game, that when Poseidon gives a portion of his rage to Kratos, that he further notes that this power is what allows Poseidon to shake the earth. When Poseidon found out that there was a hydra in his waters by Athena, he would tell Kratos that he believed the hydra to be near limitless in its power, which Kratos would defeat as the first boss in the first God of War game. Along with this, in the book version, Athena tells Zeus that she believes that Kratos is near indestructible. And keep in mind, this is early God of War 1 Kratos with no godly powers and we have only started with his feats. Continuing on with Poseidon, Kratos and Poseidon would face off in the beginning of God of War 3 and Kratos obliterated Poseidon in their fight. Keep in mind, Poseidon had his own wishes to kill Kratos outside of Zeus commanding it. As Kratos is the reason that Atlantis sunk into the waters within God of War goes to Sparta. Atlas, the four-armed titan, has immeasurable strength as he has been burdened with holding up the entire heavens. In the great war that takes place between the gods and the titans, Atlas would resist the power of Hades and it would take both Poseidon and Hades to take down the titan. At the end of God of War Chains of Olympus, Kratos 1v2s Atlas and Persephone, the queen of the underworld. Then after Kratos kills Persephone, he is able to have Atlas pinned down for them to return him to his prison of holding the heavens. Then in God of War 2, Kratos would interact with Atlas again, where Atlas tries to kill Kratos. But Kratos is able to resist the titan's strength and is trying to recruit Atlas to help him take down the gods, so he's not trying to kill him either. Hermes. So normally this is where I would mention Hermes with their speed, but we already went over that with Kronos. But to do this super quick, Helios is... Do I even want to do this? This has already been done. I'm just going to... We're just going to... Moving on. Hades. Continuing on to Hades, the ruler of the underworld. Hades is responsible for maintaining the endless underworld and keeping the Titans imprisoned, which includes Atlas and Kronos. Hades as well has a vendetta with Kratos, as the god of war killed his wife Persephone. Hades is capable of pulling out souls of his enemies, and Kratos was able to resist this along with defeating Hades in the middle of God of War 3. The Furies. These beings are neither Titan nor God. They are the Guardians of Honor, and were involved when Kratos was going back on his oath to Ares in God of War Ascension. The Furies were created because of the conflict taking place from the Primordials. It would later be known that the Furies conspired with Ares to take down Mount Olympus. Kratos was able to defeat all three of the Furies, and this insane feat takes place before God of War 1. The Sisters of Fate. They have the power to control time itself and change the fate of essentially everyone. Also, right before Kratos starts to fight Thanatos, the Primordial Being of Death, Thanatos mentions that the gods of Olympus decide what happened in the world and the Sisters of Fate make it actually happen, showing their power for the events that not even the gods are capable of. They send these tasks to the Sisters of Fate to perform them. And guess what? Kratos defeated all of them. 
Ares, the original god of war that essentially ruined Kratos' life. Ares was so powerful that his voice alone was enough to make the earth rumble. As stated in the God of War book when he is frustrated with Artemis intervening with his fight in Athens. To further add to Ares' power, there was a possible future that Athena had seen where if Artemis and Poseidon joined her against fighting Ares, they would all fail, which is obviously a testament to how powerful Ares is. Also, one of the few beings to actually kill Kratos, and he did it in God of War 1 where he threw a pillar across the entire desert directly into Kratos before he could open Pandora's box. Once Kratos was able to climb out of the underworld and get his hands on Pandora's box, he was able to do what no man had done, kill a god. Zeus, the king of Olympus, the top dog in the Greek era. Zeus is the father of Kratos. Zeus also defeated all of the Titans at once with the Blade of Olympus, which Zeus himself created with his own power. This puts him significantly higher than the Primordials and obviously the Titans who I have mentioned earlier. Kratos was able to defeat Zeus and survived being completely impaled by the Blade of Olympus, which leads us to the Norse era. Baldr, the Aesir god that was unable to feel anything. The same god that was able to three-tap the world serpent, that when fighting Thor, they split the world tree, which is referenced several times to hold the nine realms together, and is noted specifically that every strand of the tree is above space and time. Sigrun, the leader of the Valkyries, and the most powerful outside of Freya, the original queen of the Valkyries. Sigrun was specifically mentioned to be the most powerful enemy that Atreus and him had fought up to the point of God of War Ragnarok starting, which would include any enemy that Kratos came across in God of War 2018, aka Baldr. Heimdall, entrusted with the Galahorn. Heimdall has the ability to see the future, and Mimir himself stated that he has never seen anyone lay a finger on the god. Heimdall was able to use Realm Shift on Kratos himself when they fought, which is described as, quote, distorting space and time by creating a Realm Shift, end quote. This is something that Kratos is able to overcome in their fight and is able to do himself when fighting enemies that normally would be relative to his base speed. Meaning that while Kratos is in measurable speed, he has the potential to spread this gap even more when fighting the Norse gods where this is introduced. Neithog. Neithog gnaws at the root of the Yggdrasil and was such a force that when the eagle in it got into conflicts, the world tree quaked, the same world tree we mentioned earlier. When Kratos and Freya are fighting Neithog, Freya shares that it is attacking through realm tears, which would be Neithog sending attacks through the realms to get a sneak on Kratos and be out of his line of sight. When Neithog was trying to escape through the realms, Kratos was able to keep them from escaping and eventually defeat this powerful being. Garm. Considered a threat by anyone that knows of it. Garm is one of the most feared beings in all of the Nine Realms, even getting Heimdall to be very upset that it was released by Atreus. Garm is capable of tearing through the realms and creating its own entrances for interdimensional travel. Kratos and Atreus are able to work together to defeat Garm several times. And it takes the knowledge that Atreus has about harnessing souls and releasing them that they are able to defeat Garm for good. Thor, noted to be one of the most powerful of the Norse gods, having been able to split the world tree where each individual strand is above space and time, as described by Mimir, the smartest man alive in the Nine Realms. Also, when fighting the World Serpent, Thor hit them so hard that they sent them back in time, which is... If you're not aware how we get to see them in God of War 2018, it's an older version of that same serpent. When Kratos and Thor have their first fight, Thor has been ordered by Odin to not kill Kratos. And when they fight, Thor knocks Kratos out and reawakens him to continue their fight, meaning that he was capable of killing him had he been allowed to. The next time that Kratos and Thor fight though, however, Kratos is able to pin Thor down and get the victory over him, but lets him live. Odin. So when Thor decided that he wasn't going to attack Kratos anymore, Odin decided to finish off this severely weakened Thor and finish him off with one stab of his spear. This would then prompt Atreus and Kratos to begin the fight with the All-Father, Odin. To clarify how powerful Odin is, is that with everything we went over in the North mythology, 
that Odin and his other Aesir brothers defeated the creator of the Norse universe, Ymir. This would shape everything that takes place, and Odin would provide himself with the title of Allfather. Then when fighting Kratos, Atreus, and Freya, he would then make them have to work for the victory, where he was originally able to get Atreus and Kratos locked in in one of his binding spells, and then they were saved by Freya. While it would take all three of them to defeat the Allfather, this is absolutely an amazing feat to defeat Odin. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as we're going to have more God of War content coming out. I appreciate you and I will see you in the next one.